I am Dr. Sharath, International Cardiologist, Max Cure Hospital. As a part of our CTO series, I am presenting second case today. It's a case of uh, IOS guided anti-grade CTO wiring in a CTO sitting at bifurcation. So this patient is a 44 year old male who came with a class 2 shortness of breath with normal sinus rhythm and good LVRV function. He is diabetic and hypertensive. Stress test was positive. So hence angiogram was done outside which revealed 2 vessel disease. This is a coronary angiogram so revealing uh, mild disease in osteolality and uh, a total occlusion of uh, middle lady after uh, diagonal origin and also LED origin is deceased around 50 to 60 percent and uh, there is a disease even in osteum and distal LED is uh, uh, filling with the bridging collaterals and looking like a small vessel. So uh, RCA injection showed uh, intermediate lesion in the middle of the RCA and uh, giving a good collateral to the left system uh, uh, which is filling uh, distal LAT. Coming to the analysis of CTO, so if you analyze with the JCTO score, so there is a uh, ambiguous cap. So uh, with the angiogram we are not able to make out uh, where the entry point is but uh, there it looks like some nipple here but I'm not sure is it really diagonal or you know nipple of the LED. So but when you look uh, angiography so uh, angiographically it looks like uh, you know entry point is somewhere here and uh, yeah so, but otherwise this segment is not angulated and there is no calcium here and uh, uh, the occlusion length is uh, less than uh, 20 millimeters. So overall there is only ambiguous cap. So JCTO score 1. So it's intermediate uh, uh, kind of uh, CTO. And coming to the analysis of wiring strategy for this case, uh, keeping hybrid algorithm in mind. So uh, we have not used dual injection as uh, bridging collateral is filling uh, distal LED nicely. So we took only left injection and there is an ambiguous cap and there is a good intervention collateral for this case coming from RCA and distal target is okay. So in this situation, um, yeah, we can uh, try anti -grade obviously because it's a short lesion so success of uh, anti-grade uh, wiring uh, will be quite successful uh, but only thing is uh, to identify entry point we may have to use intravascular ultrasound. So wire with intravascular ultrasound guidance and once the wire goes true to true see that's the end of the procedure and if the wire goes true to false then we may have to use uh, alternative ADR techniques to complete the procedure. If this doesn't work, then we may have to go to retrograde to complete the procedure. So uh, as a part of uh, uh, analysis, we did divers from Ramus to identify entry point as well as to measure the sizes of diagonal and proximal LED and so to see the austral LED MLA. So whether to include austral LED into stunting or not. So, and also entry point for anti grade wiring. So, this is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I was from Ramus. You can see this is the uh, entry point for LED. So, and uh, you know, this uh, proximal LED, which is showing uh, a you know, good sized vessel, almost four millimeter, and this is a hostile LED. So with mild blocking, but uh, overall lumen area is looking good. So coming to the sizing of the vessels to plan your stunting strategy subsequently. So in this case, you know, diagonal looked almost 2.9 to 3 millimeter. And uh, yeah, this is the osteal uh, diagonal, which is around 3 millimeter. 
and this is the entry point for LED. So, and this is a, a proximal LED which is looking around four millimeter, and this is uh, a hostel LED uh, with MLA of more than five mm square, uh, with a block area of around fifty percent. So I decided to leave Ostium uh, from stunting, and this is a, a polygonal confluence with the nine point seven mm square, and uh, this is LMCA with mild blocking. So uh, coming to the LED entry identification in iOS, so while coming through Ramus, so we can observe, you know, this is the site of uh, LED um, uh, and we can see gradually uh, this becomes a circle and then joins diagonal. So this is the LED here and next shot, this is a complete circle is visible LED and this is a median, this is the you know, true lumen and here you can see this is a true lumen and it's all media all around and it's joining diagonal and then you can see there is, see there was a, a suspicion of nipple but we are not sure about it here but if you see in iOS there is a small entry or nipple which is visible into LED with the blood sparkling into the LED. So this is the entry point. So now with iOS I confirmed you know this is the entry point for uh, wiring and next uh, we started wiring LED. So wiring can be done uh, uh, with iOS catheter in situ there uh, taking a crusade catheter on the same wire but you need a French catheter for that. As I had seven French catheter in LMCA so I removed iOS and uh, uh, passed crusade and subsequently penetration wire to uh, enter into the LED. So this is a uh, Hornet wire. So I entered uh, at the iOS identified entry point and uh, we uh, advanced. It looks like you know we entered uh, this is true lumen and I passed an iOS to confirm the wire position. You can see the wire is in true lumen and this is a media of LED and this is a true lumen and this is a wire. So and uh, then um, we advanced further in epicranial it looked like uh, it's in the true lumen but in epicordal we can clearly see it is outside the lumen so it's in subintimal area. This is harnet wire. So yeah I'll just show you wire uh, confirmation in true lumen uh, from uh, iOS from Ramus. So you can see uh, this is a LED appearing and you can see this is a wire so which is in true lumen. So as you come proximal this is a wire and this is a media and this is a true lumen and then you can see this is the wire with the reverberation artifact and this is a media and you can see you know this is the media and this is a wire in true lumen. So all through the wire is in true lumen uh, as confirmed by iOS. But distally uh, it went into false lumen. So that is subintimally. Then I decided to uh, uh, shift to another uh, drilling wire with good torque control uh, to redirect the wire. So. I took off uh, harnet wire, uh, took a um, Gaia wire. So the problem with harnet wire in this case was so while I was dr drilling so it was buckling into the diagonal. So uh, this buckling will prevent our torque to redirect the wire that caused a problem. So that's why I shifted into um, a Gaia wire. So it's a um, drilling wire with good uh, tip control. So this is a Gaia, so which almost looked like in true lumen in epicranial, but when, when I came to epicordal, it was in uh, subintimal. So I pulled the wire back and redirect it. And now you can see in epicordal, it is in true lumen. And also in epicranial, it's in true lumen. So we advanced further. We entered into a couple of branches to confirm the position. and. Uh, then uh, I took a 1 mm balloon and dilated uh, LED and then 2 mm balloon dilatation and then 
uh, we exchanged wire uh, with the workhorse wire using the same crusade we can exchange through crusade so and then I dilate a diagonal with 2 millimeter balloon and now uh, so this is offset dilatation you can see now LED is well opened but if you see the size of diagonal versus LED diagonal is looking you know better size than LED so at this stage I decided to do uh, iOS to decide the stunting strategy uh, as we have to do bifurcation here. Uh, sizes are quite important in deciding a stunting strategy. This is a distal LED reference which is looking around 2.4, 2.5 and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, LED just at the edge of the CTO it's around 2.96 and this is LED distal to the diagonal entry. Uh, here it's almost achieving 3.5 to 4 in size and next uh, this is uh, proximal to diagonal almost 4 to 4.2 so and this is a diagonal uh, distal reference it, it was around 3 to 3.3 millimeter and uh, this uh, uh, LED reference which is around 4.2 so overall when you take reference diameter the distal reference of diagonal is uh, more closer to the proximal reference of LED than the distal reference of LED. So, um, yeah, now we can see here, here it's around 2.4, 2.5, here it's almost 3.5 or 4, so that is just distal to the diagonal, and here it is 3 to 3.25, and here it is 4 to 4.25. So here, I mean, uh, based on uh, whether we have to stunt diagonal or not, we have to decide the stunting strategy. So in this case, uh, the MLA of diagonal is around 2.4 mm square and there is a huge block area, more than 70 mm, 70 percent. And the size of the vessel is quite significant, supplying big territory. So I decided to stunt diagonal so once we decided to stunt diagonal so the sizes decides you know your stunting strategy here more than the angle so so we have two approaches either uh, treat diagonal as the main branch or distal led as the main branch so in this case as the distal reference of diagonal is matching more with the proximal reference than the distal reference of led i decided to go as diagonal as the main branch and so when we take diagonal as main branch so we can apply two stunt strategy so one stunt here and another stunt like this so it's a 2.5 or 75 stunt into LED and 3 millimeters or 3.25 stunt with a 4 millimeter pot so uh, if you decide uh, uh, LED as a main branch, you have to use three stand strategy because see the size here is only 2.5 and here it is uh, uh, approximating almost 3.5 to 4. So put one stunt here and another stunt into diagonal, then put third stunt overlapping the distal LED stunt and kissing. So but I preferred a diagonal as main branch stunt strategy to end up in two stunt strategy. So we took 2.75 28 millimeter uh, stunt to LED uh, with a balloon in diagonal. So after deployment, we just crushed uh, stunt and then uh, recrossed uh, LED stunt and optimized with 2.75 NC and then we did a kissing so as a part of uh, uh, decay strategy uh, then i took a three millimeter three into 20 uh, millimeter stunt and deployed from led to diagonal and then uh, i did a part with a four by eight millimeter balloon so then we recrossed in uh, into led and then we did a kissing optimization plus kissing the 2.7515 LED 3 by 15 into diagonal and then did a report with 4 by 8 millimeter in proximal LED. So after stunting, so this is one injection you know which showed uh, there is some um, block missing here 
uh, as well as you know uh, looking you know significant stenosis so we did an IVAS which showed longitudinal uh, geographical miss uh, with a block area of uh, almost uh, you know nearly 70 percent more than 70 percent and also uh, with MLA of 1.7 mm square and I could also make out a dissection flap at uh, distal end of the stunt. So you can see this is a dissection, this is a flap and this is a dissection area. So yeah, we can see the dissection. So while well, coming from uh, distal LED, so you can see, yeah, so there is a block here and with a calcium and most often uh, dissections happen just besides the calcium. So you can see, so this is a, a dissection, right? So as I come proximal, you can see this is the dissection and, and this is the flap. So all this calcium is actually moving. Calcium in a way marks your speckling underneath. So, so there is a dissection flap and with uh, M low MLA and a high block area. So we decided to uh, stunt it. So we took a 2.5, as a reference is only 2.5, uh, so 2.5 by 15 and uh, we deployed and then we optimized. So this is a pre-PCI and uh, this is a post-PCI NGO. So we can see uh, there is a, uh, yeah, there is a diagonal which is filling retrogradely from the first diagonal and also uh, there is a, a uh, undersized, uh, you know, LED distally. So I did an IVAS to understand what is going on here. So IVAS showed uh, absolutely there is no blocking there, and uh, uh, there is no blocking, and the vessel size is quite small uh, than the you know uh, distal LED. So this is clearly a negative uh, remodeling of the vessel. Uh, in the mid LED, which quite often we make out in IVAS of uh, LED CTO. The reason is um, uh, here there is a CTO, and all this segment is filling with your uh, anti grade collaterals, that is, bridging collaterals, and this vessel is filling from uh, RCA. So, this mid segment of LED is kind of a watershed zone. So so proximal to this, it is filling from anti-grade collateral. Distal to this is filling from retrograde collaterals. So this is a watershed zone and relatively underfilled zone. So which usually goes into negative remodeling. And there is no need to stunt those areas. If you leave it over a period of time, it grows. So learning points from this case are, so I was helped us in locating entry point as well as confirming intimal entry before you go further and angiographic blunt proximal cap may not be blunt always sometimes uh, you see a, a nipple in IVAS so which makes your uh, wire entry uh, very easy IVAS uh, sizes helped in planning stunting strategy in this case Mainly, you know, we treat a diagonal as main branch because of uh, uh, distal reference of diagonal is uh, approximated uh, proximal LED reference than the distal uh, LED reference. And angiographic uh, edge stenosis uh, is not uh, just stenosis, uh, it's uh, both a geographical miss as well as dissection uh, in this case, uh, and which we stunted. Uh, with a 2.5 and angiographic post CTO segment lesion in this case was negative remodeling uh, in IVAS uh, because of IVAS we avoided uh, you know further stunting in that area thank you